The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour as we meet at 2 p.m. Uh, most of the time. <clears throat> the following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on here? Well, we attempted uh, so far today uh, to bake a downtrend. It does not look like we're going to confirm uh, the higher um, close that we're going to need uh, to put a stake in the heart, uh, at least temporarily, of the bear market. Um, I'm looking at the spies at uh, 411. You know, it's been kind of light and variable here for the last couple hours. Uh, I just see too many things fading out of the way. Uh, I had some suggestions for for. Uh, calls early in the morning. Uh, they, the market did just exactly what we suspected it would, uh, buying those calls in uh, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA. Uh, I've got some emails from them. Almost everybody, I, well, you should be out by now, um, sold the pop. Um, and even some of the stocks that should have held up and are still holding up a little bit better. Maybe we get a little bit of push before the end of the day, but most of them have uh, rolled. But, uh, you know, had about a $12 move in NVIDIA. Uh, Apple uh, went from, what, 152-ish to 158-ish. Microsoft went from one, or 271 to 278-ish. Uh, so hopefully you sold the rips. Uh, market's moving a little bit too fast to wait for somebody uh, with a uh, email uh, and to write a newsletter about it. But, uh, well, that's about it. And I feel a little bit better uh, about this week, at least on the options. So uh, that's uh, three out of four that probably should have turned out fairly good if you took the money and ran. Uh, and uh, nice big winners, at least the ones from today and one loser. So on the options things, they're pretty much kind of doing what they're supposed to be doing. The big question I have is whether or not we can close over uh, 411 uh, on that S&P cash. Uh, one of the things that was most interesting to, to, uh, for me this morning was the very light volume on the push lower. We actually have very good volume at the moment with about 8.4 billion shares in the CBOE consolidated tape. Uh, but that uh, could be a big minus now if we can't hold this higher range. So is there anything else we can do today? Um, you know, the rips, they're strong. They act like they're going to stick, and then they give it up. Uh, but, uh, I mean, options are still rather bullish for next week. One of the reasons why I was buying calls this morning. Uh, but, uh, man, what can you do? Um it's a bear market until it's not a bear market. Uh, generally, even though in bear markets, you get a little bit more than this on the upside. Uh, and uh, just uh, the drumming that we've had might lend itself to people uh, further shorting into the close today. So for the most part, uh, I'm all cash. I have no desire to be uh, in equities uh, themselves. I will be even at higher expense using uh, options just because the risk is lower. Uh, at any time, we can expect this market just to try to give it all up at once. Uh, and until that passes, uh, options are kind of the name of the game. And uh, I'm going to drive, as I said before, many times like I'm driving in fog. A lot of people want to drive like they think that they see everything clearly. Um, you know, you can see something like I saw it this morning with the setup for the calls, uh, but uh, by the afternoon, it got a little fuzzy, a little bit more foggy, and uh, yeah, I think you got to have fairly uh, fairly uh, quick fingers and not um, 
depend on the market doing exactly what you think it's going to do, uh, even midterm now. I think we have to be looking fairly short term. But uh, keep a close eye on that SPY. Same thing with the S&Ps. On the cash, we need something like uh, 4,100 uh, plus. And I'm going to say 4,120 now uh, as it close. We're sitting right now at 4,100. So I want this to kind of come off a little bit to give us any kind of signal. Uh, Monday, we may have a little bit more. It is options expiration week next week for the monthlies. Uh, generally, after the kind of action we've had this week, it's not uncommon to see a whole lot of lack of volatility. So I will not be surprised to see the market do something like maybe just slowly go up through next week. Um, therefore, it's going to be a hard option trade. You won't be able to outrun the decay in the premiums, which are fairly large. Um, some of the things that uh, made me go home today uh, and think that uh, we might be able to put a stake in the heart of uh, the bear for at least a few weeks was the UVXY. It's still flat on the day. Uh, going into a weekend like this, it should have, you know, it, if we're just flat, we probably should have uh, been down maybe a buck on it. I'm going to say that. But uh, trading around 1780 at the moment, that's another one you want to watch. If you start seeing all the premiums get sucked out of that, I think that's probably a little bit more of a bullish signal going into the close here today. But uh, now there's just uh, a lot of things that aren't working. Um, you know, my calls for the next 30 minutes or an hour have been pretty good. Uh, my thoughts about what I think I see longer than that, much tougher. But uh, we're kind of getting to that line in the sand in the Rubicon, whether or not we can get to those levels here today. Now, even if we don't, maybe we could get to a Monday, but uh, that just means we wouldn't have a signal today. But volume's a little bit more increased, which I would have liked to seen lighter volume with a push down this morning. Um, the close, though, more important than the volume today. Uh, and, of course, uh, just a huge amount of people being short means that we're probably not going to see the kind of downside that we've seen, uh, we saw on Thursday. Uh, we had one of the highest readings in out-of-the-money uh, puts yesterday. And, of course, that always makes me think that when everybody decides that they need protection, eh, generally the hurricane's already hit. So we'll see. It's going to be, I mean, it's going to be one of those photo finishes, I think, today. Uh, we don't have a lot to, to hang our hat on yet for the bull side of next week's expiration. But, uh, again, that can change at any time. 877-927-6648. And uh, what do we have out here? Uh, okay. Got a few emails here, so we'll go through them right now. Uh, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, Jay will answer that question and also, uh, also give a uh, shout out to uh, Brent. Uh, Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. 
Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. As we return, yeah, there's not a lot I want to talk about today, history or much anything. Let's just go ahead and get to the charts and the emails that are flooding in at PATH at TFNN.com. Uh, Brent says, uh, thanks for your suggested trades in the newsletter this morning. Uh, I let the market trade for a while this morning at the ugliest point with the Dow off plus 500. I purchased the two. 77.50 calls on Microsoft at 75 cents each, sold those for a buck 85. Around a half hour later, did the same with NVIDIA, 192 calls, bought at 38 cents, sold for a buck. Have yourself a great day. Thanks, Brent. Uh, I kind of went a little closer uh, than that. Uh, I didn't wait to get into the money that far out, but all of these trades probably did well, as long as you took your cash when you could. Um, uh, let's see, something about, I'm not exactly sure if this is for me. Uh, okay, da, da, yeah, it is. So, um, I got in my text ETF at the highs this AM and a, a bit later went long SPXL. Looks like lower volume retest of 5.2 so far, which may uh, eventually form a little W bottom on a positive candle today, which seems to coincide with Tim Ord's thoughts on your short uh, show yesterday. Either way, a rally should take us to at least 430 on the SPY, if that's all true. What are my thoughts? We got to close above uh, 411 on the, that is kind of interesting, and eh? the 411 on, uh, or the 911, which one would be more interesting? Anyway, the 411 on the spies, and we're just bouncing around underneath that. I think everybody is uh, shorting down here into thinking that they're going to get a route into the close. As I said, uh, all cash now. Um, I'll let everybody else fight out the weekend. I'm I'm pretty tired, <laughs> to tell you the truth. It's been a long week, and I think everybody else did. Um, again, you know, if you did any of the three suggested uh, trades, the only thing I can say is we never got uh, to what I thought that options were pointing to today, which was literally going through and probably closing up at 420, uh, maybe 425-ish, uh, another kind of just giant reversal day. Uh, we got kind of up there, and we saw an absolute torrent of short selling. Now, if you want to go long, 
Uh, in the short term, you don't like it because, of course, it slows down the momentum. On the long term, uh, that's uh, more grist for the mill as we go higher, and I think we're going to go higher next week. I'll run the uh, options. Uh, in fact, I can start them now, so uh, give me just a second here. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll download uh, and update them. Um, let's see what right here. Okay, delete. Okay, download. Okay, so they're started. We'll take a look, but uh, yeah, we really have two weeks to options. Well, yeah, two weeks to options expiration. This is the first one. Um, now, uh, next Wednesday, of course, is going to be uh, Weird Wally Wednesday or Delta Neutral Day, however you want to call it. So we've got a couple of days going into that, and we're going to have a much better idea. But options have been pretty bullish all the way through this and even through this week. So, you know, maybe they change, and I'll change my opinion, but my guess is that we're probably going to have something uh, that does get us back up to that 430 area uh, before uh, two Fridays from today. Now, maybe that changes, and then I'll tell everybody that it has. But option market makers are the best traders on Wall Street. They have to be, or they'd be broke fairly quickly. And by hedging their positions, they kind of tell us where they think the market's going. They're not always right, but they're about 80, 85 percent right. So you've got to have some fairly compelling evidence to think about it. I've thought for a while that the move here was a slow, steady move back up uh, and maybe into the three-day weekend at the end of the month. And then the next big bad leg of the bear move is down. Um, I can't repeat enough. In a bear market, you're in a bear market until you're not. And you're going to have a lot of sharp, uh, quick moves higher. Uh, the thing to do is take your money quickly until you have confirmation you're out of a bear market. Uh, but uh, I've, what I do is see, I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, but I will look it up right now. Uh, You make uh, oh, Shelby Davis. You make most of your money in a bear market. You just don't realize it at the time, <laughs> uh, which kind of makes your thinking backwards. But uh, it does end up doing so much of that. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, don't have much there. There. So the first question is the uh, the day is the SMHs. Did I get the other one? Thought I got. Uh, two, two, two. Where's it at here? Did I get both of them? Yeah. Okay. I want to make sure I got the two emails that to begin with. Uh, nobody's buying the dips now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? You really need the SMHs to get these things off the the stink off of them is a close above uh, 237 um, yeah 237 that's at March 14th low with uh, 13 million shares right now you're at what uh, 232 so you need about another five bucks I actually like this pattern and most people would hate me for it but you've had what Wyckoff would call the automatic rally to four uh, 247. You've now pulled back down. The If volume remains light and you really don't go and blow out anything with a lot more volume, the next move above the 3x3 three three is probably going to take you up to about 255. And again, these are all moves in a downtrend in a bear market, uh, but you have significant and very quick moves to the upside. And I could see us kind of changing the uh, high volatility market over the next couple of weeks to a lower volatility market where the market just kind of crawls higher until it fails at a much higher level. Uh, but on the SMHs to go short these things, I'd want to see light volume at 255 right now. So there is some area. As I said uh, earlier in the show, I'm not a big fan of going along equities 
at the moment uh, as long as there's options. And if you buy options when everybody's uh, scared to death, they're actually pretty cheap as they were this morning. Um, but at the same time, uh, you want to get rid of them fairly quickly. Uh, the one thing that has me thinking that we may be doing better uh, than uh, we thought was uh, Apple. Um, Apple really, I mean, you had a low back in here today of what, to, 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 to 154-ish. Oh, that's not right, yeah. yeah is that right? Hello? 154. Uh, I got to one, what, what was the high? 159. So you had a, a little bit of a bounce, but it's still holding in there, 156, uh, 63. So uh, we'll be back in If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. I got a question on what the options are telling me on Apple, and very big indication that 155 was the lowest you would see uh, in this expiration cycle. Um, now we're in this kind of no man land, but next week uh, above 160 uh, then takes you to about 165. So if you can break 160, you've got another five bucks in this to the upside. That's kind of like what the entire market is looking like. And that is, there is some overhead resistance. Uh, if we get up and through some of these things, um, Microsoft uh, thought maybe it would bounce back above uh, today. I thought maybe at the highs, maybe 280, uh, would we get for the high today? 
to uh, 279.25. So pretty close. Didn't quite get there. I didn't sell it at the top, by the way. Um, I thought maybe we'd get up that 280, uh, but no, nah, not so much. Anyway, you're just hanging around in the middle of this gap. Uh, but at this point, you probably want to see Microsoft test the 270 level. That's uh, 46 million shares. Today, you got 23 million shares. So it is down on a light volume day so far. Uh, at half the volume, you don't really have to test 270. Um, but uh, until this thing really breaks above the 3x3, three three, I don't expect uh, the kind of momentum that's in Apple uh, to come back in. It, it seems to be one of the weaker ones. Uh, NVIDIA uh, should have been able to run to about 300 bucks. I mean, 200 bucks today, excuse me. Don't want to shock you. Uh, you had a nice drive up. You just you got some decent volume. You're back down here testing the lows again. It's not anywhere close to the lows. I think I bought the, uh, the calls this morning at around 181 or 182 ish uh, and sold the rip. But I was thinking you could get 200 bucks out of it today if it could get above and stay above the trend line. But again, uh, the market's thrown as kind of a curve. We're you know we're at this point where it is kind of a coin flip. Um, and we're seeing some fairly big moves uh, in the spies, but I'm, that's really what I'm kind of focusing on. Uh, a handful of stocks in the uh, in the Nasdaq can move it a little bit too much, but the spies much tougher. Uh, but again, we're about three points lower than where we need to be at the time at the present time. So one more time back into the breach on Monday morning, maybe. Um, as Monday came this week, I th I was hoping what we'd get is like 500 points down on the Dow uh, before the market ever opened. And then it just continued to climb back up uh, into uh, the open on Monday. We never got that. That's still kind of a nice pattern I'd like to see uh, on Mondays uh, to say that everything's over. So come Monday morning, if uh, the options to just get brutal, uh, but uh, repair themselves by the time the market opens. That's generally a pretty good sign uh, that they're just uh, making sure everybody that was on the weak side of the options market is out and uh, that if they open the market that way, all anything would happen was that it just rip higher. So they generally will let those things uh, fade back into the close, either higher or lower into it. Um, question about AMD. It certainly had a fairly good rip today also. Let's see. Um, but again, really just a doji out here in the gap. Now, it did have a much bigger uh, gap with a lot of juice and a ton of people going short uh, at 99.69 on the 4th. You've kind of pulled back here. There is a lot of juice in this thing. Um, the double repo, or not the double repo, the uh, trend line, though, has it around this 95 or so. So when we get into next week, uh, if this thing can just go sideways, uh, burn a little bit of this overbought and oversold condition off, I think you're probably going to go back up there and watch those short sellers uh, get squeezed out before this thing has another opportunity to go lower. Uh, let's take a quick look. Um, I think we showed this. I hope we showed this earlier in the week um, where I thought that some of these things were going. Um, before you get short again on uh, Advanced Micro, we're getting into this area that is this first area of confluence. And when they're wide like this, they just act as resistance, but there's not a lot of good places to hang your hat on, on where to buy and where to go short. Uh, the big number that you're looking at here, if you're thinking about going downtown with AMD again, is the 114.26, 114.76. Um, and as I said, I think we could just kind of meander uh, into the end of the month, certainly into options expiration a little higher. Everybody go, well, you know, the sky's still blue, the, everything hasn't fallen. Uh, and that would set up kind of a long-term ABC back down maybe to the next big move. 
877-927-6648. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, give me a call. I uh, do have another couple emails here, so we'll go to the emails. Uh, okay. You've got mail, baby, yeah. Yeah, I got mail. Okay, uh, question about NVIDIA on buying a new card, NVDA. Uh, not so much about uh, where. Um, if this is a low, 247.61 would be the next place I'd think about potentially shorting this. That's a fairly nice bounce off here. The question is more about would you buy a video card now or would you wait till later? Um, I answered kind of uh, one of the things, and we've talked about it over the last week with NVIDIA, AMD, and some of the others. And that is they've announced new products. Now, these products are incredibly better than the last generation of products. I uh, wrote about it in the Tech Insider today. The problem you have is it's killed a lot of sales, why people think that they're going to just wait now for the next generation to come out in September or October. So they're still selling cards. They're still selling around retail price. They're not having to go di di uh, big dis discounts. But they, they're not selling at a premium anymore. And a lot of people have decided just to wait. You know, if you got a new Corvette that does uh, 180 miles an hour, and they say the next year's uh, Corvette for the same amount of money goes 230, and you're buying a car because it goes fast, you pretty much wait. Uh, you might buy one of the old ones at a discount, and maybe they get into that. Uh, but it's problematic to know that both AMD on its uh, processor side and video card side and NVIDIA with its video card side have all announced uh, machines or new uh, products that are incredibly uh, faster than the current generation that have uh, in the processor part of AMD incredibly better uh, specs. And these things have to leak uh, because guess what? It's just problematic uh, to try to make something that depends on a motherboard manufacturer uh, or parts manufacturers or other folks without giving a little bit, showing a little bit, a little bit of leg about what your product is. Uh, on this, uh, I don't like being short uh, after the uh, cows left the barn. 114.26 is where you would want to probably pull the trigger if you are thinking short on this. And if you're long and can stomach it, 114.26. Back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. As we return, a uh, question about uh, some of the charts I had up a little bit earlier, like on Apple. Uh, what you want to be looking for is confirmation of uh, what they call hooks or cocky sticks. A lot of times uh, they're not as, uh, as huge, but you're going to see the major inflection points uh, where the option market makers are thinking. Uh, I ran the numbers earlier, and there's they believe a 95 with a 95 percent chance, uh, with a, a 95 percent confidence rate, that the lowest you see uh, the possible in this expiration cycle before the 20th uh, is 155, and that's why when I started seeing the numbers this morning, uh, I was picking off a lot of these stocks and Microsoft and and uh, Apple and Nvidia that were just way, way out where the buses don't run. So not only thinking we were going to have a bounce, but they would be fairly good and sharp. Now, once you get into one hockey stick it, uh, level, you really start looking at the other. So what we should see is some fairly stiff resistance with Apple at 160. If it can make it through 160, the next level uh, that it really looks like it, it's got anything uh, to go up against is 165. I think that would be pretty pretty bold but 162.50 to 165 ish is probably where option market makers think this is going um you also want to see how much money is won and lost a lot of uh places uh max pain places will just say this is the where the x is that's not enough data um the hockey sticks and st uh, statistics are generally fairly important uh, not only in in options, uh, but any kind of uh, uh, parts of chance. A lot of times you'll see where these things diverge uh, from a straight line, and that tells you where a lot of people are placing their bets. Uh, but on this part, they're just they're way, 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 way out there. And of course, uh, probably the best you can hope for is 165. Uh, but same thing with uh, Microsoft. Uh, MSFT. In fact, all of them I was looking at had, you know, tremendous upside potential, um, at least for today. I didn't think that they were going to be down. Uh, but like on Microsoft here, uh, yeah. well, I ran this earlier in the day, but it was at, well, like 270. There was a big hockey stick. So when we were down there uh, on those lows, I thought, you know, if you're going to have good risk reward, that's kind of it. Uh, 280 was, I was thinking, was the very high side of that. We got to 279.25. Again, kind of a bear market. I probably should take a little off the top uh, for these things, but uh, almost all of them are like that. And uh, NVIDIA was probably one that we uh, moved the fastest and the, the most in dollar volume for us today. But uh, again, uh, very problem. Let me. Why do we go here? Very problematic. Um, this thing just is way, way down there at 180. Uh, was again on one of its ticks, and it had a little bit 
of uh, 190, not near as much as it has right now. Um, there was a big one at 200, and that's why I thought maybe we'd see as high as 200 if uh, the market could break out on NVIDIA. I also, it's uh, one of the two most hated stocks in the market right now with massive amounts of short sellers. So if you can get these things going against you, um, you got those short sellers with some wind at your back. Again, we've got a lot of mud here, not a lot going on in signals. We're really probably going to have to wait till the last couple of minutes of the day. But 408.28 uh, for the last tick on the spies is not reassuring um, of finding a low today. Again, we need 411-ish on the spies to really do much of anything. So we'll go back to, I think I got some more emails here now. So I heard the little bell. So what else do we have? Okay. Uh, take a look at AMAT, and then we'll look at the usual suspects. Uh, as I said before, we've got some fairly nice confluence levels, um, even applied material. Um, if you wanted to short these things, I probably wouldn't be shorting down here. Uh, this is maximum risk and probably the le least amount of reward in the SMHs right now. Um, 130, you have very nice confluence on applied materials. So if you were thinking about shorting it, I'd certainly want a decent bounce. And what do we get to? We got to 119.12 two days ago. Uh, right now we're at 112. Um, so 18 more bucks higher. Uh, wouldn't surprise me. You had a little bit more energy on this big leg from 142 down to 107, but it bounced on the gap. You may get a little bit more retest of that uh, to, to April 27th low, uh, that's nine and a half million shares. Today you got four. So you're down, but uh, my guess this thing really starts running on the next break above the three by three. So you'd need that. Uh, if we close a week well away from the OIX, can it affect the next week? Um, what happens is just like, just uh, imagine uh, that you're at the paramutual horse racing event and you go. The odds are always changing depending on what people put uh, down for and who's, which horse they bet on. So it's always moving. If you've not gotten my paper on uh, the original paper I wrote, Back in 2000, Christmas of 2005, uh, email me and read it because it shows how they kind of track back in. Uh, if they're a little higher, they come back down a lower. If they're a little lower, they come back a little bit higher. Uh, but they're always changing. And news will change them if uh, the option market makers see something that they think should change. They're going to change their bets. But remember, these are the same guys that pretty much know where all the bodies are buried. Uh, so they know how to kind of uh, make uh, intelligent bets on what's going out there. Oh, we got another one here. What is this? Uh, does uh, closing outside the weekly expected move often lead to further inefficiency in the options pricing? Um, it depends. But again, I have a feeling you haven't read my paper because <laughs> it's got a lot of charts and graphs in it that explain how these things uh, actually go out. Uh, okay. It doesn't have so much to do with the close for options. It has to do with where the option market makers think it's going to expire. So we've got that. And one more. Uh, okay. Uh, and if anybody has not read it uh, and wants to know more about options, I've got my original paper uh, from uh, 2000, Christmas 2005 about what you're looking for in options uh, market making um, and how they kind of converge back in uh, eventually over time. But they'll change every day. And the thing is just to watch it. Now, of course, they're never more predictive than when everybody goes Delta East. That'll be next Wednesday. That is when they take the hedges off and just try to hope on a uh, hold to hope on to any premium decay. So we're getting into the part where these things are going to be highly, uh, even better than they were.
these will change over the next few years. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we have some questions that I did see early off. A question about Cleveland Cliffs. Uh, what we have here. Um, well, it's at support. So the question is what you get. You don't have much in the way of volume. Uh, so doesn't look that bad, actually, to me. Uh, but you're going to need it to consolidate and come out of the, the stuff. You need to close probably about 24 and a half, that July, uh, January 5th high of the beginning of the year. That's probably about where uh, you're gonna find some kind of significant signal once it closes back above that. Um, I don't see anything here other than the very low volume. Uh, you got 13 million shares to yesterday's 17 million shares. And the last big move down had 22 million shares. So yeah, you're probably finding somewhere out here. Uh, 2277 is the uh, 618. And that would probably be some place I'd want to be in there at. Uh, Pan W. P A W N. And w. Uh, it seems at a good price. Um, what you did do today, which is something a big no no, is you're going to close through the confluence level uh, at uh, 526. And that is something that tells you it can go all the way back down uh, to the next level of support. You did not want to see that. You don't want to see more volume. Uh, yesterday you had uh, 1.8 million shares. Today you have 1.2. So you got, generally I'll give it one day, but generally if these things are going to do well, they stop literally right at that level. That would have been uh, 526. 
and you did. You blew through it with a gap down. Volume's not all that exciting, but uh, that still tells you that 455 from the January 24th low is still open. Maybe you get down there with lighter volume, but you don't like that. That is a fairly bad signal. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, uh, question about uh, how options track in. Um, if anybody wants it and they haven't looked at it yet, uh, I've got a PDF of my 2004 article that just shows how options expirations track in. Here's the chart that I'm really talking about. But read the whole article. You'll have a much better idea of how I'm looking. I've improved this a great deal, but it's kind of a good introduction. So when you can, not when you have to, we will see you Monday. Well, not Monday, Tuesday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.